we're going inside the toy box with a bug's life so let's get cracking Hello all my explorers and welcome back to Lauren's Adventures out there. And if you're new, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. My name is Lauren and I'm with Castle Escapes and Clones where we discuss everything in the Disney universe. We talk Disney, Pixar, Marvel, Star Wars, The Muppets, 20th Century, Hulu, Disney Plus, ABC. If it's about Disney, we are talking about it, so if you like that kind of content, we'd love it if you would subscribe to our channel, hit the bell for notifications, and do like this post, as it really does help us out. Okay, so we are continuing our series, Inside the Toy Box, which is our look at the films of Pixar in chronological order. And today, we are going to be talking about 1998's a Bug's Life. Inspired by the Aesop fable, The Ant and the Grasshopper, A Bug's Life tells the tale of a young ant named Flick who wants to help save his colony from the tyranny of the grasshoppers. He goes on a quest to find warriors who will help him, but those warriors end up being circus bugs. In 1994, before the release of Toy Story, Pixar creatives John Lasseter, Andrew Shanton, Pete Docter, and Joe Ramps got together at lunch to dream up what they could work on next. One of the ideas was A Bug's Life. Lasseter liked the idea of doing a film about bugs since, like toys, they were relatively smooth in surface. Stanton and Ran then pitched a story inspired by the ant and the grasshopper. Lasseter offered some suggestions and sent the treatment to Michael Eisner. Eisner liked the idea and the treatment was submitted under the title Bugs, using their contractual agreement with Disney to option a second film. Lasseter made Stanton his co-director to alleviate stress as well as groom him to be a lead director. In the fable, the grasshopper squanders its spring and summer and goes hungry by the winter. He goes to the ants who worked all summer to store food and they turn him away. In Stanton and Rant's version, the grasshoppers just took the food. Also, the story involved the circus bugs also trying to deceive the colony for food, but eventually decided to help the ants. Stanton began to doubt the motivation of the circus bugs, seeing them as unlikable. One of the characters, Red the Red Ant, was changed to Flick and made him believe that the circus bugs were great warriors who could help his colony. The cast was primarily made up of sitcom stars. Flick was voiced by Dave Foley from News Radio. Princess Ada was voiced by Julia Louis Dreyfus from Seinfeld. Molt was vo voiced by Richard Kind from Spin City. Slim was voiced by David Hyde Pierce from Frasier. And Dim was voiced by Brad Garrett from Everyone Loves Raymond. Joe Ramps a member of Pixar's story team, played Heimlich the Caterpillar at the suggestion of Lasseter's wife, Nancy, who had heard him playing the character on a scratch of vocal track. Lasseter really wanted Robert De Niro to play Hopper, but De Niro declined. When Lasseter met Kevin Spacey at the 1995 Academy Awards, he offered the role to him and Spacey immediately accepted. The characters were designed to be more appealing to audiences. They removed the mandibles and gave them more, more human-looking eyes. They also stood them on two legs, in contrast with the grasshoppers, who were given extra legs to make them look less appealing. New software had to be made to accommodate the demands of the film. For example, they needed to animate a colony of 800 ants and give them all life. 
animating them individually would be impossible. Bill Reeves, one of the film's two supervising technical directors, found a way to animate universal ants so that all ants appeared lifelike. The animators also used subsurface scattering, developed by Pixar co-founder Ed Catmull during his graduate study days at the University of Utah. To render surfaces in a more lifelike way, Catmull ordered a short film to highlight the software, and as a result, Jerry's Game was released with A Bug's Life. During the production, a public feud broke out between DreamWorks' Jeffrey Katzenberg and Pixar's Steve Jobs and John Lasseter. Katzenberg, who left Disney under a very contentious fight with Michael Eisner, was now head of DreamWorks' animation division and swore to rival Disney. The first project they would work on would be a film called Ants, starring Woody Allen. While more satirical and adult-oriented, Ants was a story about an ant who stood out from the other ants and worked to save his colony and win the princess's hand. Sound familiar? The Prince of Egypt was intended to be the first animated film from DreamWorks, but Disney decided to put A Bug's Life against it. Then, suddenly, DreamWorks announced that Ants would be first. Lasseter accused Katzenberg of stealing the idea when the two met after Katzenberg left Disney. Lasseter still considered Katzenberg a friend and, so and a sounding board. When Katzenberg asked what Pixar was working on, he kept pushing for more information. Katzenberg and Jobs then had a conversation where Katzenberg said that he would stop production on Ants if Disney would move A Bug's Life so as to not compete with the Prince of Egypt. Jobs told him that he would not be able to do this even if he wanted, and so Ants became DreamWorks' first animated film and ahead of A Bug's Life. Like Toy Story, the score was composed by Randy Newman. In addition, he wrote the song, The Time of Your Life. A Bug's Life ranked first at the box office and stayed there for two weeks until it was taken by Star Trek Insurrection. At the end of its theatrical run, the film grossed $363.3 million worldwide well surpassing the competition from Ants. The film also scored 92% fresh on Rotten Tomatoes, with critical consensus stating, A Bug's Life is a rousing adventure that blends animated thrills with witty dialogue and memorable characters, and another smashing early success for Pixar. A Bug's Life was nominated for the Academy Award for a Best Original Musical or Comedy Score, the Golden Globe Award for Best Original Score, and the BAFTA Award for Best Achievement in Special Visual Effects. In 2008, the American Film Institute nominated the film for its Top 10 Animation Films list. So what did I think of A Bug's Life? You know, I watched it um, in anticipation of doing this, and I have to say I love the film. Now, it definitely is in, uh, still in its nascency in terms of computer animation, but the story is so much fun. I love all the circus bugs, um, and I just think that it's just such a, a great little story that was inspired by an Aesop fable and you, you can totally get that in in the film now you know this was the first time that I realized that there was such a uh, public a dispute with DreamWorks uh, on them releasing Ants before A Bug's Life but in all honesty uh, I don't. I remember enjoying seeing ants, but I don't remember it very well. 
but I do remember A Bug's Life and how it made me felt. Um, and I just I think that it's such a, a, a great film. Uh, have you watched A Bug's Life? And if you did, did you love it? Did you hate it? Let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed yourself today, we would love it if you would subscribe to our channel. Hit the bell for notifications. And do like this post as it really does help us out. Visit us on all of our socials down below and visit our website at www.castlescapedandclones.com. Thank you so much, and we will see you later. Bye!